Okay, as you can see, the weather's taken a little bit of a turn for the worse, but we're in for real adventure now because this house right here, this abandoned house, is primo habitat for one of the low country's most elusive and really cool mammals. So what we're gonna do is have a look around and see if we can find some of them. All right, it's pretty dark in here, but I think if we look around, this looks like great habitat. Oh, here we go. This is exactly what we're looking for. This is a really unusual bat. It's called a big-eared bat, a raffinesque big-eared bat. And this is a species of special concern. It's protected, but it's characterized by very, very long ears. I mean, the ears are about that long. And this is a species that used to roost quite a bit in sort of upright trees, and it still does where they're available, hollow trees, cypress and things that in the swamp. Unfortunately, a lot of that habitat is gone, so they rely on houses like this, old houses, that are close to the swamp so that they can roost. Okay, here we go. Here's a couple more. In fact, one of them just flew. One of them just flew. But there's still one more over here. Uh, this is another raffinesque big-eared bat. And look at the ears on this thing. Just a fabulous little animal. So wingspan of about 12 inches or so. Bats are not big. I mean, they are little guys. Typical bat has a wingspan of about 12 inches and may weigh half an ounce or so. So bats, because they fly, you know, they're the only real true flying mammals, uh, they have to be very lightweight. Okay, you see this bat hanging upside down. And so this animal is literally hanging by its feet and it's gonna stay here all day. Now about dusk, it's going to head out into the woods, into the forest, and it's going to literally catch thousands of insects. Things like mosquitoes, uh, noceums, all sorts of biting flies and things on the wing. I mean, it's going to fly and capture them and eat them, and it's going to perform a very, very important and significant uh, benefit to us. It's going to keep us from having to spray a lot of pesticides and things like that. Oh my gosh, look at this. This is guano, bat poop, basically. And so you can see all these stained areas where bats have been roosting right here. Look, they've kind of, the paint's kind of peeling off and stuff, and it's stained from, from the fecal droppings of the bats. And so what's happened is they've been roosting here for so long that they've made this enormous pile of guano. Now, guano is amazing stuff. It's very high in nutrient quality. In certain areas, it's used as fertilizer for gardens and all sorts of things because it's, because it's so rich. But there's a, a lot of bat poop right here. You see lots of areas here where it's stained, where bats have been roosting. Boy, there have been thousands of bats in here. Okay, here's a bat, and I'm going to see if I can get a grip on it. I've got to be a little bit careful, and I have gloves on to protect my hands. And I'm going to see if I can just... And he, I've got gloves on. He's trying to bite through the gloves, but he can't. And I'm going to get a good grip on him. So this, is a, this appears to be a big brown bat, Apteschus fuscus. Fabulous little beast. Very common in houses, in barns and things. In fact, it does really, really well around people. And uh, it likes to roost in, in old houses, like this abandoned house that we're in. So this is primo habitat for a big brown bat. OK, I don't know if you guys could hear that little chirping noise. Bats echolocate, and they actually vocalize quite a bit. And this is their way of determining where insects are. So what they do is they fire out these sounds, and these sounds bounce off objects and come back. And then the bat's brain can analyze how close the insect is, how big an insect it is, whether it's the kind he likes to eat. I mean, it's just an absolutely amazing way to locate and catch prey that's flying around in the air. It'd be hard to catch any other way. I mean, they are awesome, awesome animals. Very lightweight, huge wings for their size, and they're designed for just a really, really neat existence. And let's get a close look. One of the things that you'll notice is the wing is basically just a modified hand. In fact, chiropterans are the, the, this group, and they literally mean 
hand wing. And that's because if we look at it really close, you'll notice that the thumb sticks out at the top of the wing, and then each one of these long bones is a finger bone. And so imagine your hand spread out, and then with webbing in between. Of course, modified and lengthened a tremendous amount. So this animal, the whole arm is designed into, into a flying apparatus or a wing, and that's where they get the name hand wing. This is very delicate material too, so I'm being real careful not to hurt it. Notice I'm wearing gloves. Bats bite, and bats can carry rabies. So I'm being very, very careful, but I've got a stout pair of gloves on, and I'm being handling them in a way that he can't bite me. Uh, I do not recommend ever picking up a bat, because as I said, bats can bite, and they can certainly break the skin on a, on a bare finger or bare hand. Bat have fairly impressive teeth, and when you look at them up close, they're just wicked looking teeth, but they eat insects almost exclusively. Uh, there are examples of species in other parts of the world that eat other things like fruit bats and things, but our bats are insect eaters and they eat literally thousands and thousands of flying insects. Okay, we're going to put this little guy back and I think he'll crawl right up in here. There we go.